Are you ready to take a spiritual test? Yes, for this video, we're going to do a spiritual test. Yeah, I know, at best, that's a very modern concept, and at worst, it's self-focused. But hey, this is a YouTube video, and hopefully it's a little bit entertaining. But hopefully it encourages some self-reflection, and a little self-reflection is healthy. After all, we read in Scripture that we are called to test ourselves to see if we're in the faith and to examine ourselves. So for this test, I'm going to ask you just one question. And it's an open-ended question. It's a very simple question. It's only three words. And I want you to fill in the blank. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. Just go with the first thing that pops into your brain. So you're ready for the test? Here we go. God loves, insert the blank. God loves, what's the first word that comes to mind? Now, I think for most moderns, we're going to say, God loves me, God loves you, God loves everyone. And those are okay answers. However, are they the best answers? Is that where the Bible puts the focus? Now, to get to this, I went through one day and I found every time the word love is used or related words when it comes to something that God loves. And I listed those things down and I grouped them together and I discerned what are the things that God first and foremost loves. Before we get there, though, a few quick things about God's love. We are commanded to meditate on God's love. We read in Psalm 107, verse 43, Who is the wise? Let him give heed to these things, and consider the loving kindness of the Lord. Because we read throughout Scripture, God is abundant in loving kindness. That is found throughout the Bible, and particularly in the book of Psalms, that God has great love. Now, love defined, to give a simple definition, is to will the other's good according to God's word. So, according to the Bible, what's the number one thing that the Bible most frequently speaks about that God loves? You know what the answer is? By far number one, God loves his people. God loves the saints of the old covenant as found in ancient Israel. Why? Because that is where Zion is, his sanctuary. And God loves where his sanctuary is found. When we get into the new covenant, the superiority of the new covenant, we know that God loves the saints of all the nations who have been gathered into Christ's church by the work of God's saving grace. So God loves his people. Now, a few people are mentioned in particular by name, Jacob, Solomon, Martha, John, to mention just a few. However, the clear pattern is all those who are born again by God are loved by God. And that is a good and glorious thing. But notice where the focus is. God loves his people. God loves the saints. God loves the elect. God loves the collective. God loves the church. God loves his people. That is the number one thing the Bible frequently speaks about when it comes to God's love. What's number two? The second most common thing that the Bible refers to that God loves is God loves righteousness. Since God loves righteousness and justice, he therefore loves the righteous. He loves those who keep his commandments. He loves, therefore, the good works of the saints. The faithful who fear God and call on him, he loves. Those who serve and know him, God loves. Those who love the saints and give unto his church, God loves. So God loves the saints and God loves the good works of the saints. Now it is true, God does love his creation. He loves the cosmos, the created order, which God has ordained, because the heavens and the earth are full of his love. And God, because he loves his creation, also does love mankind, no doubt about it, as seen by the gift of life itself and the wonders of his creation. And God especially loves the orphan, the weak, the widow, the alien, and the downtrodden. But why did you answer the way you did? Now, again, there's some truth in the statement, God loves me, God loves you, God loves everyone. In the right context, the, those sentences make sense. However, that's not the biblical focus. And why do we focus on me and you and everyone and not with God loves the church and God loves righteousness? I mean, how many of you said the first thing is God loves the church 
and then God loves righteousness, or God loves his people, and God loves the good works of the saints. That wasn't my first answer. So why do we answer this way? Well, all too often we've bought into a hyper-individualistic self-focus of reality. We focus on me, myself, and I, and our culture screams at that, and all too often we in the church have bought into it. Unfortunately, all too often the church encourages it. The church has a more marketing strategy. You know, how can we sell the gospel? You know, how can we make the gospel palatable for people? You know, Jesus loves you and it's a wonderful plan for your life. And that's not the biblical presentation of the gospel. Because let's be blunt, we don't know the scriptures unless we don't fear God. And that's why we give such weak answers. Now, God's love is found only in Christ. And that love is perfect. Therefore, we all, including Christians, need to repent, believe, and follow daily and trust in Christ, believe in his word, and rest in his gospel. And we know that God loves his people, and we can rest in the fact that God loves his people, the saints, those who are in Christ, and God loves their righteous acts because our good works have been covered by the blood of Christ and forged by the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and therefore God loves us. And God loves our good works. Well, as always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.